So what would be the mechanism behind vitamin D and sun exposure helping with colorectal cancer? Great question. Um, what do you do? You got some, uh, you got some quotes for us? I'll well, take it. Okay. Yeah. I'll just read the quotes really quick. So here's a quote from a study. There's like PMIDs. We can link in the show notes if people are interested. So it says, studies in the past decade indicate that insufficient sun exposure may be responsible for 340,000 deaths in the U.S. and 480,000 deaths in Europe per year and an increased incidence of breast cancer, colorectal cancer, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, autism, asthma, type 1 diabetes, and myopia. Um, I actually thought all those things were due for, uh, to red meat. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> That's okay. what you would be allowed to think in this, in this culture, right? Uh, we also have another quote here. Frequent regular sun exposure acts to cause cancers that have a 0.3% death rate with 2,000 U.S. fatalities per year. This is the SCC and the BCC skin cancers I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And acts to prevent cancers that have death rates from 20 to 65% with 138,000 U.S. fatalities per year. That's the breast, colon, and blood cancers primarily. And... My understanding is the reason that you're pointing this out is because we've been told a lot to stay out of the sun. Uh, we do spend a ton of time indoors. I'm curious as to what the numbers are. Um, and potentially that is doing us a tremendous amount of harm. And so then we are told to go outside, put sunscreen in. And I can appreciate what you're saying um, from that perspective that we are not getting enough sunlight. But it's more complicated than that, isn't it? Well, so I would really, as, as it relates to mechanisms of like cancer and sun exposure, I'd like to unpack another part of the story, um, maybe briefly to wrap up the vitamin D side of the story. When UVB light hits your skin, it's not only that pre-vitamin D that's made, there's also over a dozen other vitamin D-like molecules that are made in response to UVB light. So if you're supplementing with vitamin D, you're not, you're missing out. You're getting a very narrow spectrum result. But if someone couldn't get outside, let's say they're institutionalized. Mm -hmm. um, or in the hospital, they have a limited exposure to sunlight. What could someone do? Would they have to change their light bulbs? What would be um, an opportunity for change? So, I mean, I think this is one reason why this story has not really been popularized because there's a lot of implications as to actually how we're living our lives, how people are being led to think in a certain type of way, and actually an inability to critically think due to a lack of sunlight, which we will talk about very soon. Um, but, you know, if you can't get access to sunlight, there are light devices that you can use indoors. Um, so, for example, red and infrared light devices, they can, that can re-engineer that red and infrared, that long wavelength light back into your indoor life, which is largely not present due mm -hmm. to modern light sources. Um, there's also UVB lights available. So, Spurdy is a brand that makes UVB panels. They also make UVA panels. Um, and we use that actually yep. for skin, yep. um, for eczema, psoriasis, yep. it's used for eczema. Exactly. And then the red light, we use Bond Charge. I'll, I'll put a link there for you guys. Yep, yep. So red panels can be great if you're mm -hmm. not accessing outdoor light and you want to re-engineer some of that light back into your you know, indoor lifestyle, you can absolutely do that. Um, the UVB panels are great. I would just recommend that people try to time the use of them at the right time, like to make it so that it's kind of concordant with when you would uh, have those exposures outside. So if you're going to be having UVB and UVA light, that should probably be more around like solar noon time, like middle of the day, because those receptors, especially like the neuropsin, is going to be telling your body like this is the signal coming in. That means it's midday. -ish. So but before you move on from that, um, you'd mentioned that there are skin receptors. Does someone need to sit in front of the light naked? Do they have to not wear glasses? What What are... What should they be doing and for how long? Okay. So really important question. By the way, Dr. Alexis at our house, we walked down, we're like, why are you naked in front of the red panel now? <laughs> that did not actually happen, but it was close. I know, right? I mean, I, hey, I was trying to wear a crop top outside. I'm always in crop tops, shorts. Producers, and... you guys are in trouble. Okay. Um, right. So for how long and in what kind of capacity? Yes. So there's another really important part of the story that we didn't mention that's also related to UVB light. And that is a molecule that's a pro-hormone called pro-opiomelanocortin or POMC. So POMC is produced in the skin and in the brain in response to UVB light. And POMC is cleaved into 10 distinct hormonal products. Three of those are alpha, beta, and gamma MSH or melanocyte stimulating hormone. So if you're not getting alpha, beta, and gamma MSH stimulated in your skin and in your brain, you're not going to effectively tan in response to UVB light. You're going to burn. So... 
this becomes you know it becomes very clear that if you're wearing contacts sunglasses or prescription glasses outside and you're blocking the ability of UV, uvb light to get into your eyes that doesn't mean stare at the sun it just means getting ambient light into your eyes you're not going to uh, effectively stimulate your melanocytes to make melanin which is tanning um, same with your skin if you're blocking that uvb light with sunscreen you're not going to be able to generate that melanin and melanin is really interesting actually because melanin is to mammals as chlorophyll is to plants which is something a lot of people don't know but chlorophyll light comes in interacts with chlorophyll chlorophyll can split water molecules into molecular hydrogen molecular oxygen and two free electrons melanin actually does the same thing and the papers that show this are quite old this has been known for quite some time um, and so when we're developing melanin in our skin and interacting with sunlight we're actually able to cultivate more free energy. So it's a way of actually eating by just being outside. It's a way of cultivating and releasing, liberating electrons into our system. Same with grounding. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean eating? Do you mean we're just leveraging ATP utilization? ATP utilization is happening because we're not actually eating food per se. Well, I'm glad you asked because I think it's really important to think about a light diet and a food diet as being... You guys heard it here first. This is very fringe-esque. Um, Matt, my producer, is laughing. But you have to understand, before ideas come into the mainstream, they typically come from very intelligent people that are thinking about things that are very well steeped in the literature. So this is what my listeners are experiencing from you. Um, so it's, it's it's amazing. It will make perfect sense in just about ten, one minute as I explain. No, no, this. 10 years. You guys will get this in 10 years is along with myself. <laughs> When you eat food, you're not your mitochondria don't see carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Mine do. They see electrons. <laughs> no, no. Mine mine definitely <laughs> are like this was steak. <laughs> I know, right? It's ground beef, steak, salmon, good stuff. But so when you're extracting, you're when you're breaking down, assimilating nutrients, the whole purpose of eating is to extract electrons from macronutrients so that those electrons can enter into the electron transport chain and support ATP production in mitochondria. So anywhere that you get electrons is food, technically. So you can get free electrons from eating. So by extracting those electrons from food, that's powering your mitochondria, ATP production. You can also get free electrons from grounding. So getting your bare feet on the earth gives you free electrons from the earth. There's plenty of research to show this. Also to show that grounding you know, reduces inflammatory, inflammatory response and inflammation within the body, um, which is related to mitochondrial function. We also get free electrons from having sun interacting with melanin. So they're all different ways of getting access to electrons, your mitochondria to access those electrons. They're all equally important, and they're all equally accessed within the ancestral environment, too. We would always encounter all of those things. We weren't wearing rubber-soled shoes outside. We were in contact with the earth. We were getting sun on our skin. If we weren't getting high-quality sun on our skin, we were getting cold, because that's just how nature works. If you don't have high-quality sun year-round, you're going to get cold in the winter. 